Some months ago, the Lord put the word build on my heart, and it will be uh, what anchors all the messages I'll be giving over the next uh, several weeks. And I just want to remind us that Jesus said in Matthew 16, verse 18, he said, I will build my church. In 1 Corinthians, Paul said that we are God's building. In that chapter, he talks about the foundation being Jesus Christ, that Jesus is the master builder and he is building us into the transformed followers that we were created to be. Peter talks about uh, a building that is you and me. He talked to people who would see these temples and he would say, you know, now you are the building that God is constructing. You've been brought out of darkness, you're in the light. And now there is this transformational work of grace happening in your life. We build for the future. We build the dream that God's put in our heart. We build the kingdom. We build the church. Jesus said, I'll build the church, but he chooses to do that through you and through me. So we are the builders in the power and the grace of God, being built up in our faith, being built up in the vision and building out the kingdom. The word build means putting together several parts or materials to form something. We want to see the vision formed. We want to see the plan take formation in the lives of every age group of the church and the people that God's called us to reach. We're forming something. We're building something. When you take the word build and you see that part of the definition is you got to gather these materials so that formation can happen. I want to talk about one of those today that we're going to need. It's the material that I call bold, boldness. We're going to need that to build the future that God wants us to build. Boldness is a willingness to take risks and to act innovatively. So my message today is build for boldness. This boldness is the material that God is gonna use many materials, but this is one that's very significant so that we're ready to take the risk to talk to somebody about Jesus, to take the risk to do ministry in new and fresh ways, to take the risk to invest in ways that are important for the building of the vision. Here's what we all know. A single act of boldness is often the catalyst for God to do extraordinary things. When somebody steps up, when somebody steps out, then when the story is told of that step, it's magnificent. But it goes back to that single action of boldness through which God did the extraordinary. We know how this works because we have the scripture a church steps up and steps out, and God does the extraordinary. We are sitting in this building. This is an extraordinary campus. These are extraordinary buildings that help us to function in the vision that God has given us. But there was a single action of boldness back in the 90s to purchase this land. And at that time, there weren't neighborhoods all around and houses everywhere and neighborhoods right under construction directly across the street in every direction of our church. All that's happened in the south, I mean, any direction of the city, it's growing, but that single act of boldness, we're sitting in this place and the ministry is happening and it's an awesome story, but it goes back. It goes back over a hundred years where a man said, God's putting in my heart to plant a church and it's this church, and we're living in this story, but it goes back to an act of boldness. Do you know that the Methodists were going to hold a revival, but something fell apart in all that they were doing, and they had this tent. And so the first pastor of this church, he went and got the tent, set it up in Broken Arrow, and started preaching the gospel, and God started moving. A single action of boldness, and that was the catalyst through which God has done extraordinary things. A single act. I wonder if somebody here might take a single step today. When we talk about Abraham, we know that 
often we hear it, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We know he's the father of the faith, and we understand covenant through what happened in his life. But none of that would be had Abraham not stepped out, not even knowing where he was going. That single action step. Then came the extraordinary understanding of nations coming to know God and being in the covenant that God gave us through the shedding of his own blood. We love the story of Joseph. We love Genesis 50, 20, what the enemy meant for evil, God meant for good. We love the unfolding of the dream of during the years of plenty, God gave Joseph this agricultural vision so he could stockpile for the years of famine. It's an extraordinary story. But I'm thankful that Joseph took a very bold action and forgave his 10 brothers that betrayed him. Because when he forgave them, he didn't know they would become the 10 tribes, that God would form his redemptive plan. Joseph had the, the, the authority to execute those brothers who had been so evil. But in that bold act of forgiveness, we now get to tell the story and it will be told forever. We love the Red Sea. We love the people coming out of Egypt. But thank you, Moses, for taking a bold step and the rest is history. For David stepping out to fight Goliath. How many books have been written out of 1 Samuel 17? How many sermons preached? How many of us have been motivated to step out in our own life because we were taught about this shepherd who went to get a report from his brothers and ended up taking on the giant. And the giant came down. We have the story and then the faith that God can bring down giants because one person stepped out in boldness and it became a catalyst for God to do something amazing. You know, you talk to people that have been on the journey, like people like me that are in the second half of their life and even beyond. One of my main mentors is in his 80s now. And to me, he's done way more than most people. And yet when you talk to him, he never speaks of regretting taking a risk. If there's any regret, it's just that he may have missed an opportunity somewhere. Or he said to me this, I wish I would have risked more. This is the man who built this great church in Phoenix. And then while pastoring there, God put in his heart to purchase the Queen of Angels Hospital. This mega building that they would revolutionize and house people that are coming out of brokenness, addiction, and their lives would be transformed. The building cost at that time $13 million. It was way more than what they had. And then the city put on the stipulations that once you purchase it, you're going to have to bring it up to code, but it, it had been sitting vacant. Well, a lot of people talk about the Dream Center. Many of you know about Victory Church has a Dream Center in North Tulsa. There are Dream Centers all over the nation and in many places in the world. But it all started in one place. It started in L.A., with that one dream center. And now we can talk about tens of thousands of people saved and changed by the power of God. But it goes back to one bold action through which became a catalyst for God to do the extraordinary. Come on, somebody. Take a step today. Step out and do something. I don't, wanna, I don't want the story to be what could have been I want the story to be, look what God did because a church said, let's go for it and let God be God. This message is about your Goliath. This is about your Jordan River. Something you need to cross over, something you need to confront and see it brought down. I've been reading recently about Pastor Charles Stanley. He's 89 now. He pastored until he was 87. My kind of guy. I just want to die with my boots on. Amen? 
I want to die just giving everything I have to God. I'm not expecting to die anytime soon. But when that time comes, I, I want to be busy in the kingdom business. How about you? And so I'm just inspired by this guy. And, and so I, I've been reading about how when he was a young man, he was on the staff of First Baptist Atlanta. The pastor left. They, the board said to him, you preach while we find a pastor. Well, you know, he's an extraordinary preacher. And people said, we want him to be our pastor over time. And he did. Well, then God was blessing the church with growth. And they needed to step out and, and expand. And there was controversy around that expansion. So they have what we all know in church world to be an annual business meeting to discuss, you know, the money and, and going forward. He's sitting on the platform with other leaders. The leader to his right gets so mad, just punches him in the jaw. Now, had they had YouTube back then, I would just say, watch this. And we would watch it. And someone said, hey, what happened after that? He said, well, the attendance at business meetings went way up. You get a fight going on at the business meeting, people will show. And, and he said, in those seasons, it would have been way easier to not do what God was calling them to do. See, boldness is going for it when it would be easier not to. Now we tell the story of this great church through which God has saved thousands of people. Thank God for the action step of boldness. As the ministry grew, God was placing blessings on it. The opportunity came for media ministry. Now, back then, very few people were on TV preaching the gospel. Very few ministers were using radio. And he was challenged with the idea of going on television and using radio. And it was a very expensive opportunity. And he felt in his heart, that they should do it. There was a lot of controversy around it, but he did it. They did it. And do you know the day came where out of every day of the week, every week of the year, he was preaching the gospel, whether by TV or radio, in every country of the world. Every day, seven days a week, he was on somewhere in every country. Now that's pretty amazing. That's worthy of like, wow. But through that, millions of people have accepted Jesus. That's the real celebration. Million, and we can sit here today and talk about what's called in-touch ministry that has seen millions come to faith in Jesus Christ. That's the story. But it goes to that action step of boldness through which God did all of these extraordinary things things. See, there, there was a time where he said leaving the church would have been easier than staying. There was a time when going for something was too risky, and it's like it'd be better to just stay with what we're doing than to go for it. Times it would have been better to leave than to stay. So boldness could be considered like staying with something that seems hopeless. It may be staying when it would be more comfortable to give up on it. It may be going for it when it would be more comfortable not to. I mean, when Pastor Barnett in his 60s purchased that hospital in another state, that was a bold action. But I'm so glad that he did it. I'm so glad for the people that this very day are being helped through that ministry. Charles Stanley said that through those seasons, stages, and phases, when there would be this leading of God to do something bold, he said, I always felt empty-handed. In, in face of the need, he said, it, we just couldn't match up to it. And he said, but God always proved himself. See, boldness may be a willingness to say, I don't know how this is going to work. Being humble enough to say, I, I sense a leading in my heart. But I don't know how this is going to work out. But yet, humble enough to say, God is almighty and God is able and I will trust him. This is David. This is David saying, I don't know how the giant's going to come down. 
Here's all I know, that when I'm keeping sheep and they are attacked and I go to protect them, God hands over the lion and the bear. And all I'm going on is that the same God who did that can do this, but I don't know how he's going to do it. I'm saying the odds are against us here. In the natural, this is impossible. I appreciate somebody who doesn't have it all figured out. See, this is the way miracles work. This is the way great stories unfold. If somebody said to Charles Stanley, if you'll go on radio and TV, you'll end up being on every day in every country of the world and millions will be saved and you'll end up getting all the money you need to do all of that. Well, that would take no faith. All that would take is common sense. Like, who wouldn't do that? It never works like that. When you're here, all you feel is the tension of you know it's a leading from God, but you feel empty-handed up against the challenge. You don't know how it's going to happen. When you're in this place going, look what God has done. Millions of people influenced the blessing and the miracles of God that have been met. This is, this is awesome. But it starts without knowledge of how any of that is going to happen. Thank you, Moses, for standing in this place with a Red Sea in front of you, the army of Pharaoh behind you, and you said, we're not going back, and you raised a staff like that's going to do anything. You know, come on, let's put ourselves there. How are we going to do this? I don't know how this, I, this is Moses saying, I don't know, but I'm willing to stand here and see the salvation of God. And he's putting in my heart to raise this staff. And when Moses did, then he saw how God did the miracle. Who in the room today is willing to just in the moment of tension, I believe we're supposed to do this, but I'm empty handed, but I believe I'm supposed to do it, but I'm empty handed. Are you willing to say, I don't know, but he knows, and I'll stand here in boldness and let God be God. Let God do it. Let God write a story. Gene Edwards says, beginning empty-handed and alone frightens the best of men, and that is so true. I'll talk about this more at the end of the message, but I'll just tell you right now, if, if you hear this message as for those type A people, then that's not what I'm preaching. I'm preaching that when you feel to take a bold step, I'm telling you the best of men feel empty-handed and frightened. Absolutely. Anybody can stand out here in the store and go, look what God did. But when you're signing the line, when you're stepping out in faith, that's a whole different moment right there. And boldness is not about people that are a certain number on the Enneagram. It's not about personality type. It's about a person who will take God at his word, who trusts God to be God, who will step out not knowing how this is going to happen, like Abraham, like Joseph, like Moses, like David, like Jonathan and the armor bearer, like Joseph, who didn't leave Mary when she said, I'm pregnant, you're not the guy, nor is any other guy. What? Like, and he stayed, he stayed with it. Uh, it's Jesus saying, we're going to Jerusalem. And the disciples say, if we go, we're never coming out, but we're going. And redemption happens, cross and resurrection. It's Paul getting on a boat. They say, you get on that boat and go around the Mediterranean basin. They will kill you. Paul said, all I know is God told me to get on the boat and go plant churches. And when you look at the churches of Corinth and Ephesus and Thessalonica, those churches became the gateway of the gospel to where that gospel got to you and me. These people, they didn't have it figured out and they weren't like, hey, we have no fear. No, they stepped out. That's why Paul would write, I know what fear is, but God didn't give a spirit of fear. He gave a spirit of love and, and power and a sound mind. And we've got to confront the fear and move in faith. And when we feel the heaviness of doubt, we step in the promise and say, I don't know, but he knows. 
I'll just put all my cards on the table right here. I'm 56. I would rather fail miserably in the center of God's will than play it safe and end up going, I wonder what could have happened. I wonder what might have happened if. I don't want that story. And I don't believe when you step out in God's plan that you're going to fail. I just say you step out not knowing how it's really going to happen. That's why it's faith. And nothing has ever happened apart from faith. I've talked about Charles Stanley. Let me talk about the young man that started Tom's Shoes. He's, he was in a country and saw all these kids that had no shoes. Then he saw some shoes that looked pretty cool and he had this idea. I wonder if I could come up with a plan if people would buy these shoes and I could work into the profit margin, the cost of shoes, and for every pair sold, I could give a pair to someone who has no shoes. And you just go and read the story of how he found the per- this is a guy going, I had no clue how to make shoes. I was not like this, this designer. I just had a thought and I started meeting people. And do you know from just a few years, by 2020, he had given 100 million pairs of shoes to kids who had no shoes. He sold half of the business back in 2020. The business was worth $700 million. And this is a guy who, who, I mean, what a story, right? Like, what a story. But go back when he didn't have a clue how this was going to work. This is what I appreciate. This is where we have to live, with an appreciation that we don't know how the I's are gonna be dotted and all of the T's are going to be crossed. I'm talking about building Building the future, building your life. Well then, pastor, what do you do with the scripture that says, count the costs before you build? Totally believe it. You gather all of the facts, but once you have your fact column, you then start your faith column. You do the due diligence. You apply yourself. You do the math. You do the calculation of what it's going to require for you to forgive people who've betrayed you. Deal with the facts that they may not reciprocate. Deal with the facts that it may not go just the way you hope. But then get over in the faith column and say, I'm going to turn what the enemy meant for evil into a testimony. I know that I feel empty handed right now, but I'm gonna step out and trust God who is almighty. I see what the facts say, but there is faith in my heart that God is saying, get out into a new place. Somebody came up to me after the nine o'clock service and said, I just recently took a job and I know it's of God, but I feel such tension. And she, she came right here. We stood right here after the nine o'clock service and said, let's mark this moment because the tension that is in your heart, that's the raw and the real. And that's the whole thing I'm talking about. But we will live to get to this place where the story is written and all of the influence that God is giving you. And right now, this is that moment. Here is this guy called Benaya or Benaya, however you would choose to pronounce his name. He's just doing his day and a lion comes by, this Old Testament, and something comes to his mind that says, chase the lion. He does. The lion goes into a pit. He goes into the pit. If a man and a lion are in a pit, who wins? We know, not the man. And if that wasn't enough, it started snowing. And he chased this lion into a pit on a snowy day. He comes out the victor. He killed the lion. I'd have loved to, I'm going to watch that in replay when I get to heaven. And I can just see him coming out of that pit. It's snowing. He looks like a man been in a fight, but he's holding the lion. Well, 
Fast forward, David is needing mighty men like secret service. And he gets the resume of this guy who chased a lion into a pit on a snowy day. David says, that's my guy. And he becomes chief of security, chief of the mighty men around King David. He just took an, and now, now facts say this may not be the best idea, but something was in his heart, chase it. Because this is going to be a catalyst to your future. So then Pastor Mark Batterson comes along and writes one of my favorite books called In a Pit with a Lion on a Snowy Day. And he talks about how opportunity, we want it to come beautifully wrapped on a silver platter. But he says sometimes opportunity comes by as a, as a 500 pound lion and goes into a pit on a snowy day and you got to chase it. But when you do, then you come out with a catalyst action where the extraordinary happens. Well, a few things, and let me ask the worship team to join me because we've got to take action on this message. Is there something going on with you right now and it would just be easier to just leave? Leave it, leave that. But boldness, to build for bold means you're going to stay with it. Stay with it. See it through. It's too, too soon to quit. So there's that. Or is there something where God's saying, go for it. And it would be way uh, more, it would be cheaper, easier, more comfortable to not. But yet there's this tension. You need to go for it. Boldness is going for it. Boldness is staying when it would be easier to go. Boldness is going for it when it would be easier not to. Boldness is saying, I sense something in my heart and I don't have a clue how this is going to happen. But I'm willing to say that and still go for it. A single act of boldness is often the catalyst for the extraordinary. What kind of story do you want people to tell? This is for every one of us, young and old. This is not a personality type. This is about the Holy Spirit. I so want you to know that the boldness of which I speak is captured in the song we've sung, that he's our champion and he will crown us with confidence. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about something that God puts in you that's way beyond you. On your best day, you're no match for it, but you know God's put it in you. And you go and face down your giant by the power of God because he crowned you with confidence. He gave you a spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. That's energy, motivation, and stability. Say it again. Energy, motivation, and stability. In that moment of tension where you feel empty-handed in the natural, spiritually, you're going to feel energy, motivation, and stability. It's the most uh, unique like dichotomy. Over here, I can't believe I'm even going to say this, and yet over here, there's not a doubt in my mind. What is that? It's called faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. The evidence, hear the wording. It's substance of what hasn't become real. There's an evidence in your heart of something that hasn't happened in the physical realm. And so the writer of Hebrews would say, that's where you're seeing the unseen. And when you start seeing the unseen, what could be? That's where you're given an opportunity to build for bold. And when you do, you take the risk. You act innovatively. And it forms what God wants built. And the story gets told. And it's an amazing story that has its origin in that act 
of boldness. Is there a Goliath that you need to face down today? Would you stand with me, everybody? If the answer to that question is yes, then I would say just go right down into that valley like David did and say to your giant as David did to the Philistine, you come against me with the sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. I like this. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hands and I'll strike you down. I'll cut your head off. This very day, I'll give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. All those gathered here will know it's not by sword or spear that the Lord saves. For the battle is the Lord's, and he will give all of you into our hands. And with that, David stepped out. And the story is about a God who can bring down the giant. If there is a David, who will let him be God? Hallelujah. Give him a praise if you want to build for bold. Building for bold. So I'll put this up for you. Here's the way I'm living. Fear, I need to tell you something. You've been talking to me. I want to talk to you. You've been telling me what can't happen, what I'll never be. Let me talk to you for a moment. I'm building for boldness. I'm not talking about mind over matter. I'm talking about an empty tomb where the same spirit that raised him is at work in my life. I'm talking about a God who says no weapon formed shall prosper, whose name is above every name, who can do the impossible. Hallelujah. I'm talking about a God who has no equal, a God who has no match, a God whose glory is higher than the heavens. So fear, I need to tell you something. He's my champion. He's my God. He's my Lord. He's my leader. He's my visionary. He's my power. He's my anointing. He is my provision. Fear, I need to tell you something. I'm building for boldness.